You're watching Action News 10 at 10 p.m. Streets and homes are covered in sand. Wait till you see the damage Opal stirred up on the coast. Plus, if you have severe damage, federal help is on the way. We have an important phone number you're going to need. And what's the progress with the power? Crews are busy working. An update on that ahead. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Griff. And I'm Dia Foster. Thanks for joining us tonight. Officials, as officials surveyed extensive damage from Hurricane Opal, the death toll continues to climb tonight. Fifteen deaths throughout the southeast are now being blamed on the storm. That's gone up since we last saw you. In Florida, officials say preliminary damage is estimated at $1.8 billion, and that's just in Florida alone, making this the second costliest storm in Florida history. Florida and Alabama are now declared major disaster areas by President Clinton, opening the door for federal assistance. So grab a pen. Coming up, we've got an important number if you need to get in touch with FEMA officials. Now, if you want a picture of just how bad things are, you really have to take up into the air like we did. For example, take a look at this scene along Pensacola Beach. The winds were so strong. Take a look at those houses down there. Some of them are actually buried in the sand. On Santa Rosa Island, the winds and the water combined to destroy these dreams. These boats show just how powerful Opal was. But the most extensive damage probably was in Fort Walton Beach. Expensive boats that were supposed to be in the water were stacked up on land, while homes that were supposed to be on land wound up almost completely submerged. The damage didn't follow a pattern either. Some homes barely lost a shingle, while others right next door were just crushed. And folks in Pensacola Beach were still recovering from Aaron when Opal lashed out hard last night. San Rosa Island, as you know it, is no more. The situation is so bad, access to the area is restricted to emergency crews only at this time. From the water, our cameras caught a number of destroyed buildings, including one restaurant burned to the ground. Homes and business owners are stunned. We've also been told the island has now become a few islands. Apparently, Opal brought in water surges so great, the island is split into three different parts. They're around for every disaster, and Hurricane Opal is no exception. I'm talking about the American Red Cross. Director Elizabeth Dole was in Fort Walton Beach area this afternoon, surveying the damage and making sure folks were getting as much help as possible. Well, we have 197 shelters that have been up and running over the five-state area that was hit by the hurricane. Uh, we've served about 43,000 meals, 31,000 people in those shelters getting food and uh, water, clothing, medical supplies, whatever they need of an emergency nature. Uh, we'll next have vouchers available to victims so that uh, we can literally uh, help them get back on their feet again. And if you want to help out, Mobile Red Cross officials need blood. The supply is critically low. They're extending hours at the Mobile Blood Center on Broad and Dolphin Street from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. tomorrow. There's also help from the federal government tonight. Since President Clinton declared Florida and Alabama major disaster areas, FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, is stepping in with financial assistance. Now grab a pen. Here's an important number if you need help. You can call the FEMA teleregister number at this number on your screen. It's 1-800-492-2092. Once again, that number is 1-800-492-2092. And the cleanup continues in Gulf Shores tonight, where many residents are still without power. The beach was probably the hardest hit, as Opal sent sand everywhere. Today, beach business owners began the long process of digging themselves out. Action News 10's Jason Barry has the story. Gulf Shores is on the road to recovery, but it may be a while before this Alabama beach town looks like it used to. First of all, there's a bit of a sand problem. You know, I used to come up here and lay out on the beach and stuff. I ain't never seen it look like this, especially the pier and stuff. It seems Opal decided to drop a few feet of the grainy stuff where it doesn't belong, like inside this Gulf side arcade. Evelyn Young always wanted a beachside business, not the beach insider business. Uh, I guess. This, uh, what you got, that here, sand, and there's inside, it's totally, we're going to have to totally pull all the carpet and everything out of there. Uh, like I said, we had taken out all the inventory, we have tape, CDs, music, all that, we took all that out, and uh, all the furniture, but we're just going to start all over. But sand isn't the only problem by the shore. It may be a while before folks are allowed back into this beachside condo. And they won't be swimming for a while. That's because their entire swimming pool is full of sand. Take a look at what used to be the beachside pavilion. The pounding surf and torrential rain were just too strong. 
So with no pavilion and an overabundance of sand, beach business owners want to know what effect will this have on next week's shrimp festival? The shrimp festival is probably four of the best days for the area of business, especially along the public beach and in the surrounding area. And uh, it's going to be very devastating for them if we don't get to have it this year. Construction crews were out early scooping up the sand, and they'll be back at it tomorrow, which means there's a chance the shrimp festival will go on as planned. The mayor is expected to announce the fate of the shrimp fest tomorrow afternoon. In Gulf Shores, Jason Berry, Action News 10. Organizers tell us one of the options being considered is moving the shrimp festival to Gulf State Park. And for a look at the damage in Fort Walton Beach, here's Amy Greer. The Harpers returned from a night at a shelter to find a tough greeting from Opal. Almost everything they have is gone. Living for 11 years here, um, you know that there's always the chance of the hurricane and losing what you have, but when you actually see it, um, your first thought is total denial. The storm proved a fickle one, shattering the cement block house, but leaving the family cat Cleo untouched. Nearby, the Westwood Baptist Church sanctuary was shattered, while the cross stood strong outside. The pastor and his wife are left wondering how to hold Sunday service, where they'll give thanks for a decision made Wednesday night. I wanted to stay in the church building last night, and at the last minute, we decided not to. What are your thoughts seeing it this morning? Um, I was sad because the church is gone, but I was thankful to the Lord for sparing my life. And having a smart husband to leave. <laughs> and he did to leave and evacuate. Leave. <laughs> With tens of thousands of sport fishermen here along the Gulf Coast, damage to boats was a major concern, since many of them had to be left at area marinas. Fortunately, this one was spared a lot of damage. However, it's causing headaches in other ways. As you can see, the 10 to 15 foot tidal surge slammed it smack in the middle of Highway 98. The rest of Fort Walton looked like it had been through a mix master. Sightseers walking in disbelief, recording scenes they hope to never see again. You found their other window? The Newells returned to find their houseboat on land a quarter of a mile from its moorings. The dishes and glassware inexplicably unbroken inside. Everything else is fine. My clothes are still hanging in the closet. The, everything was in the drawers. My drawers That's just not quite where it's supposed to be. Not where it's supposed to be, right. Dave Parker was not so fortunate. The cleanup of his slip at the marina is useless. The sailboat he lived on is nowhere to be found. I assume if it hasn't sunk, it's somewhere west of here. I don't know. I haven't seen it since last night. What are you going to do? <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a clue. Six, right? Six. Well, have a good day. The rest of the city searched for ice. And everywhere, the buzz of chainsaws, cleaning up debris, getting thousands of trees off of thousands of downed power lines. These two men drove 300 miles to set up shop on Highway 98, but promised us they're here to help, not to profit. Just debris, mainly. Small saws, smaller stuff. A lot of them wasn't generators, and we couldn't get any. There's none to be had, I don't believe. We, we tried to get some. I couldn't find any in the whole state, so I just gave up and came up with a saw. More than 700 police officers pitched in from across Florida to help. One of the first departments to arrive, one that learned three years ago the kindness of strangers in Homestead, Florida. When Andrew hit, you know, our houses were gone, our families, so when a lot of the police departments from like Charleston and North Florida came in and helped us out, we kind of felt like it's time to repay people for what they did for us. By nightfall, the national media's satellite city was breaking down as forklifts finally got Highway 98 clear again and the National Guard hit patrol to keep peace and order as state folks here are anxious to feel again. In Fort Walton Beach, Amy Greer, Action News 10. The bridges to Fort Walton, Destin and Panama City beaches are still closed. Engineers will have to make sure they're sound before anyone will be allowed to cross. The eye of Hurricane Opal passed close to Escambia County, Alabama town of Bruton. Just hours after it moved on, folks there began picking up the pieces while keeping an eye on the rising water. Carol Hunter has the report. All eyes are on the gauge measuring the rising waters of Murder Creek. 17 feet is serious flooding. 18 feet can be disastrous. Because if you wait till it's a foot away from the house, you're gonna, it's going to be too late to do anything. 
you're not going to have an escape route then. <laughs> Emergency officials spent the day urging folks to seek higher ground. It's a routine they're familiar with. Since it sits at the confluence of two major creeks, Bruton is no stranger to flooding. In fact, folks around here tell us the flood of 1929 left much of downtown Bruton underwater, prompting city officials to pass an ordinance outlawing motorboats downtown, essentially a Main Street no-wake zone. Well, the damage from this flood won't be that widespread, but it is certainly a cause of concern for folks living right along the water. Willie Culliver has lived next to Murder Creek for 20 years, and even though the police have ordered him to leave, he's staying, though this time he's throwing in the towel. Yeah, I'm trying to get me another place now. I'm working on that right now. I need to get away from this. You know? This may be the flood that uh, forces you to move, huh? Yeah, this will be the one right here. Even for folks whose homes are not threatened, the flooding represents a major inconvenience. Just on the other side of Murder Creek is the town of East Bruton, but it might as well be in another county. I could walk to Bruton from here in, in a couple of minutes, uh, but yet to drive it would take how long now? Uh, it'll probably take an hour. You're going to have to go all the way around uh, through Plumerton and come back up through Jay to get over to East Bruton now. But one determined young man tried to walk through the chest high waters before turning back when the current became too swift. Police officers were waiting for him. I told you why though, so you went, came across it, that you couldn't get across that didn't you? Oh, but I thought it was not Uh uh. Didn't I tell you? Mm -hmm. Officials tell us there were no casualties from Opal as it tore through Bruton. All that's left now is the massive cleanup from fallen trees all over town. In Bruton, Carol Hunter, Action News 10. Officials tell us Murder Creek is now at about 16 feet in holding. They're not sure it's crested yet, and they're still urging caution. Well, Gulf Coast wasn't the only place that was hard hit. Up next on Action News 10, you'll see some of Opal's damage as she headed north. Power outages, fires, and floods coming up. Well, some will stay closed. Others will reopen and update on the status of local schools ahead. Skies are basically clear outside, but in our first look at weather, we're looking for patchy fog between now and sunup. And tomorrow, it's going to be mostly sunny. More on the forecast and a tropical storm in the Atlantic later on. Lance. We've got college and high school football postponements to tell you about. And the human hairstyle hits town. Sports is coming up. But first, Bob and Dia will be back with the rest of the news after the break. Opal blew, blew through Mobile with heavy winds and torrential rain, but for the most part, folks are counting their blessings tonight. But not everybody. This entire street in West Mobile was blocked by large tree branches and tree trunks. The storm also kept the phone company busy as down limbs knocked out phone lines and electricity in many areas, including one area that did, uh, there was kind of a balancing act done on a telephone wire by a tree. It was a mess. Let's head to Montgomery now, where Opal's winds presented major difficulties in the capital city. The storm left thousands without power and flash flooding forced evacuation of many neighborhoods. In Birmingham, officials believe the storm may have caused this popular shopping center to catch fire and go up in flames. Even Atlanta, Georgia couldn't escape Hurricane Opal's wrath. During its sweep through the Peach State, the violent storm downed power lines and trees all the way up there. It flooded roads and it damaged cars, too. Here's an update to the power outages tonight. The power crews continue to work around the clock to get things back to normal. Alabama Power had 113,000 folks without power after Opal came ashore. Tonight, that number is down to 24,500. 24, they hope to restore power to everyone by Saturday. Gulf Power in Florida still has about 175,000 people without power from Pensacola to Panama City. In Baldwin County, good news. Riviera utility officials say all of their customers now have power restored. Although the power is back on in Baldwin County, some folks have to be concerned about the water tonight. If you live in Spanish Fort or Fairhope, listen up. Because of some broken water lines in both cities, you're being asked to boil your water for the next two days before drinking it. Also tonight, we have the latest on closings and openings in our area. We have lots of calls in our newsroom tonight about schools, so listen carefully. Classes will resume tomorrow in Mobile, Washington, and Baldwin counties. Also, all Mobile and Baldwin County Catholic schools and the University of Mobile. However, schools will be closed in Escambia County, Alabama, and Florida, and Santa Rosa County, Florida. Spring Hill College in Mobile will be closed, but all employees should report to work. 
Other openings, the Baldwin County Courthouse will reopen tomorrow. So will the Mobile County Health Department and Whiting Field in Milton. And I'm sure everybody is glad that Opal is mm -hmm. out of here. And now we've got Pablo. I didn't quite understand that. Schools will be open in some of those areas, right? Right. <laughs> that's, what, that's what the parents are being asked right about now, right? <laughs> exactly. Okay, we've got the weekend forecast, our local weather, and a tropical storm. Stay with us. Just a gentle reminder of what we were dealing with last night as, as Opal moved on shore right about dusk and then continuing tracking on through Bruton and Montgomery and then running across Tennessee and all the way past Kentucky tonight. That storm is up toward Lake Erie. And matter of fact, it's causing a lot of heavy rainfall all the way from Ohio to Pennsylvania, back even into portions of Virginia. This is what we have right now outside. Still rain showers are prevailing down in extreme southern Florida and off the coast, but in our area, basically the skies are clear, and as the winds blow out of the west tonight, light westerly breezes, we're expecting a little patchy fog between about midnight and about sunup tomorrow. This is what we've got right now. Opal is sitting right here. It's tracked almost due north up from the coastline, and right now it's spreading heavy rain showers across the eastern Great Lakes all the way into Pennsylvania and even into New England, and rain showers are also lingering off the coastline. We've got a storm right here that will be producing rain showers around it, maybe a few snow flurries here and there as some cooler air is sweeping through Montana from Canada. And out in the Atlantic, we do have a brand new tropical storm. It has the name of Pablo. Pablo is located right there, 11.4 degrees north, 41.6 degrees west. It's moving on a west-northwesterly track. It has increased in strength since earlier this evening. It's up to 60 miles per hour, just 14 more miles per hour. It will break into that hurricane mode. We don't want to see that happen, but here's the course right here. It would take it on toward missing the Caribbean, and it's sitting way down here. It's still 1,300 miles away from the Caribbean or the Lesser Antilles, and we still have some names to go. As you see, Roxanne, Sebastian, Tanya, Van, and Wendy's the last one we have. We don't have a name with the letter Z in it, and I don't think we're going to get anywhere near that. 83 degrees was the high in Mobile today, 84 in Pascagoula, 87 up in Pensacola there, and 82 was the high for Fort Walton Beach. All the lows in the 60s and 70s, 71 degrees Pensacola, 67 Mobile, 74 Fort Walton Beach, and 69 in Pascagoula. Right now, Pascagoula is coming in at 74, 69 degrees in Mobile, Pensacola at 72 now, and 75 in Fort Walton Beach. So there's a cool spot, 70 degrees down near Gulf Shores, and Monroeville has 70, Jackson, Alabama at 69. Here's tomorrow's map now. Cooler, drier air pushing its way south, and tomorrow a cold front will sit on top of us, then it will go stationary. It's not bringing us any rain showers. Some rain showers are possible across Tennessee and Kentucky, more scattered rain showers down into Florida. So tonight, it's going to be fair and mild, and we're going to get a little bit of patchy fog between midnight and dawn. The overnight low about 62 degrees. We're going to have light west winds. That sounds so good, doesn't it? Light west winds, not 135, 125 miles an hour. Tomorrow, it's going to be mostly sunny. We'll have west winds in the morning, northwest winds in the afternoon. Uh, uh, the winds will be 10 to 15 miles per hour tomorrow. The high, about 85 degrees. The weather's worth singing about tonight, I tell you. 82 degrees the high on Saturday, partly cloudy skies Saturday and Sunday. Lows will be in the low 60s to upper 50s for a couple of nights. After last night, we'll do three-part harmony. <laughs> okay. Do. Okay, you can start us. We'll, we'll finish okay. later. Here's some other news going on tonight. We'll take a look at some of those stories coming up, including one of terror on the playground. A horrifying accident turns deadly for a toddler. Plus, despite a downpour from above, the Pope reaches out to thousands. The latest on his American visit ahead. But first tonight, here's a look at the closing numbers on Wall Street. The Dow gained 22 points. Every day, more people are turning to Action News 10 at noon. I watch the new news every day. I like Action News 10. They're more thorough than anybody else. If something has happened, we know early. I like the broadcasters. Okay. I, like their, I like their style. I like their information. Nancy, uh, I really like her. Turn to the team that brings you more news more often. Nancy Pierce, Eric Reynolds, Dave Daughtry. Weekdays on Action News 10 at noon. Yes, I watch it all the time. Which station is that? Channel 10. In our look at other news tonight, we begin with a heartbreaking story out of Oakland, California. An out-of-control pickup truck plowed into a daycare center playground, killing a toddler and injuring 10 other children, three of them critically. 
Neighbors had to use a car jack to pull out four children who were pinned underneath. Police have questioned the 18-year-old woman driving the truck. So far, no charges have been filed against her. Two days after winning his freedom, O.J. Simpson may have another legal battle on his hands, this time over the custody of his two young children. Simpson met with Sidney and Justin for the first time in more than a year last night. Nicole Brown's father, Lou, is saying he'll fight O.J. over the custody of Sidney and Justin, O.J. and Nicole's, Nicole's children. Under the temporary arrangement, Simpson was to regain custody if freed from jail. Neither wind nor rain could keep them away. More than 80,000 rain-soaked worshipers filled Giant Stadium today. They joined Pope John Paul II as he celebrated Mass. The pontiff called on those gathered to continue in the tradition of anti-slavery and the civil rights movements to extend legal protection to the unborn children, the elderly, and the severely handicapped. They're back. The Navy's Blue Angels are ready to take to the skies again after a two-week hiatus. A spokesman for the Precision Flying Team says the squad will resume its air show schedule on Saturday in San Francisco. On September 23rd, the Blue Angels decided to cancel their shows after not being satisfied with their flying. And sports is next. Lance joins us now. It's an off night for sports because of Hurricane Opal. That's right. Football took a little bit of a hit. And speaking of hits, mm -hmm. the Mariners' Tim Belcher gave one up uh, yesterday, and he didn't want to talk about it afterwards. We've got the carnage next. Well, Auburn was supposed to play Mississippi State tonight on national television. However, a lady named Opal changed all of that, so this is the deal with the Tigers. Now, they're going to take on Mississippi State Saturday at Jordan-Hare, but there will be no TV for that game, so bad news there. And the hurricane also forced the postponement of tonight's mcgill tulin davidson High School contest at Ladd Stadium. That game will now be played tomorrow night at Mary Montgomery High School. Kickoff is set for 7 o'clock, not 7.30. The hurricane wiped out a couple of high school games completely. Blunt was to take on Carver of Montgomery and Baker, Florida at Flomathon. Those games are done. And it isn't weather, but injury forcing Detroit Lions receiver Anthony Carter to the sidelines. The 11-year career vet is calling it a career because he says he can no longer stand the pain of a shoulder injury. He signed as a free agent with Detroit after spending nine seasons with Minnesota. He began his pro career with the defunct USFL after an All-America career at Michigan. And get a load of this. Jerry Jones has done it again. The Dallas Cowboys owner has signed a marketing agreement that makes American Express the official credit card of Texas Stadium. Other NFL owners are suing Jones for signing contracts with Pepsi and Nike, saying it threatens the league's profit-sharing system. And the NBA expansion Toronto Raptors will open training camp tomorrow with their top draft pick in the fold. Damon Stoudemire, the All-America out of Arizona, signs with the Raptors today. And guess who's coming to dinner in Chicago? Dennis Rodman arrived in town sporting his new colors. The Bulls traded for Rodman earlier in the week. Time will tell on how he fits in with Michael and the boys, and how could that guy not fit in anywhere? Today is an off day for the Major League Baseball playoffs. The Braves come back home tomorrow night with a commanding two games to none lead on the Rockies. John Smoltz will start for Atlanta while Colorado sends Billy Swift to the mound. Last night, the Yankees took a 2-0 lead on the Mariners in their AL playoff series. The Yanks' Jim Lairitz's two-run homer in the 15th was the difference. Seattle's Tim Belcher gave it up, and oh boy, Timmy wasn't a happy camper when he noticed the television cameras outside the Mariners' clubhouse. Cameras off. What kind of is that? Yeah, get the I'll break every one of them. All of you, all the thing. Pretty impressive vocabulary by Mr. Belcher there. I wonder if he realizes that he's driving around in that fancy car and has that nice house because of those television yeah. cameras. Talk about spoiled, huh? And I don't see someone like Oral Hershiser doing that or Cal Ripken. Oh, what a, a role model. No yeah, excuse. Really. Yeah. Thanks, Lance. We'll be right back. We're excited! Yeah! I don't think there's anybody walking around anymore who doesn't think, Oprah could call me today. 
I'm here to babysit for you Get for the out evening. Of here. Absolutely true. They feel this connection that I think they don't feel with the other shows. They feel that the show is for them. I get thousands of letters from viewers asking if I can help them lose weight too. I believed in spring training not only because I know that that's what has worked for me. Anybody with real bacon in the refrigerator right now, you are kidding yourself. Once I got it, I wanted to be able to help other people to get it. I've lost a little over 13 pounds, but I've gained so much more than that. Whether you have $10 million or $10, a fat butt is a fat butt. You can write that down. You can quote me on that. We're going to exercise, and you will be successful. You will be successful. Get up tomorrow morning and do it again. John, it is back now with a look at our breakfast forecast. Mm -hmm. A little patchy fog between now and when we have our cereal tomorrow morning. The temperatures will be in the lower to mid-60s. And by the time you walk out the door, the temperatures will start heading for a high in the afternoon of about 85. Sunrise at 649. So be careful when you drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little patchy fog. And the weather had an effect on our sports, too. Yeah, it did. If you were looking for Auburn on television tonight, you probably noticed it wasn't there. It's not going to be, but they're going to play. Mississippi State and Auburn's going to play Saturday at Jordan-Hare. No TV, unfortunately, for that one. And also, Davidson and McGill Tulin were going to play tonight at Ladd Stadium tomorrow night. And that's at Mary Montgomery, 7 o'clock. It's homecoming for Davidson. All right. Thanks, Lance. You bet. That's it for right now. Tonight's show is coming up next. Action News 10 resumes at 6 a.m. with Eric and Eleanor Reynolds. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good night.